<laughs> well, it depends. I mean, there's an interesting question. Which which is the fastest growing um, areas of advertising? Well, it depends what you want. Do you want a percentage basis or do you want a revenue basis? <laughs> On a percentage basis, obviously the newest ones, which were last year nothing, are growing more, <laughs> are growing more rapidly. I mean, I think the, the the truth of the matter is is that video is a com is a convergent place, and so by its very nature, it's. Um, it enables you to put advertising across multiple platforms. Advertisers are rightly a, a, a conservative group, and so media plans very often contain a component of what worked last year, and it's and a move out. So you won't necessarily see, and also advertising is a fairly fixed percentage of GDP actually, different, different percentage in different markets, but a fairly fixed percentage. And so you will see advertising move into new areas. Now video is a perfect way of doing that, because you can take a 30 second spot and you can transcode it to run in different formats really quite easily. And that's been the way in which many television advertisers who hadn't been anywhere near digital advertising before have moved into that genre. And you can, and you can also make it simple for them to do so, move on to different platforms because you don't worry about that we do that for you we can just run it there so which is the fastest growing well it depends I mean obviously you want me to say video <laughs> advertising is the fastest growing bit I don't think I could put my hand on heart and say that that is true because I'd look at it from a multi-platform point of view it's perfectly possible that search from that point of view continues to be a faster growing piece but if you then separated out bits of video advertising by platform on different platforms then brand advertising and video advertising is very rapidly growing but if you bundle it together and included television it's probably growing at a slower rate by the way television is still growing What does video actually mean these days? I mean, I mean it offers you um, broadcast opportunities. It offers you millions and millions of people. Um, I, you know, do you mean? If you, I, I don't particularly want to get into advertising formats, you know, but you can you can run video on just about every one of our services. One of the things we liked and we aspire towards is the idea of your experience of, of BBC content will be the same regardless of which piece of glass you're looking through, as we like to say. By that I mean the four different forms of media that there are, and we can't do it yet. But our aspiration is to be is to be able to run video advertising around video content on all those different pieces of glass, this piece of glass, mobile, tablets, PCs, televisions. I, I think that the brand position for BBC.com, first of all, is operating in an awful lot of markets around the world where ad exchanges don't really exist. Hmm. And I think that if you take a UK or US perspective, I think the industry is heavily influenced by those perspectives. But actually, there are plenty of markets in the world where it doesn't really work like that. Hmm. And, and, and so that's the first answer. The second answer is we're a premium product and it would, it's not our natural mode. I don't think that anybody sells your... Nobody buys as well as, their, as somebody sells to them. So if, if you walked into a showroom with a range of cars from different manufacturers and there was no one there to tell you um, the different features and, and, and the benefits and disbenefits of the different ones. Uh, so if you like, there's, an, there's a kind of difficulty with the metric which ad exchanges are using for trading and that is the ad impression. Is that the right metric? Are you telling me that one ad impression is of the same value as another ad? Well, you argue, the, that will be determined by the CPM and that will be determined by, by results over time. Yeah, but that's not how markets actually work. Markets actually work on the basis of demand and supply. And so, by definition, I'm an economist by background, by definition, if supply is much greater than, than demand, then price will fall. That's what will happen in the market. Just look at the stock exchanges. That's what happens in those marketplaces. So, and that's because the currency you're talking about here, the ad impression, is not necessarily the right currency. It just is an unadulterated point. So I think the ad exchanges are very interesting, but for a premium advertiser, we've stayed away from it, and I've yet to see anybody who's generating the source of money that our own sales teams are generating. And you have to just sit down and do the net revenue as well as the gross revenue. And I don't necessarily subscribe 
to the theory that you should fill every little um, advertisement that you haven't filled. I subscribe rather more to the theory that if you've got seats on your aeroplane that you can't fill, maybe you should have a smaller aeroplane. <laughs> Look, let's face it, if you put a jumbo jet on between London and Manchester, and you put it on as frequently as British Airways flies between London and Manchester or London and Glasgow at the moment, and you put a jumbo jet on, they wouldn't fill it. So therefore they'd have to set, give away or give away really cheaply the seats all the time. They could never command a premium price. The whole point about media pricing is it's a, it is about demand supply and it's about scarcity. And ad exchanges seem to me just a place to... Th yeah, I don't actually like the idea of the being remnant inventory. Let me put it that way around. <laughs> If, you, if I can't think of a reason why the advertiser, why an advertiser, because they're not all the same, why an advertiser would want that particular position, why would I have it on my side? Wouldn't it be better to, to follow less is more? Because I'm thinking of the net revenue rather than the gross revenue. And I also think, as I said before, that no one sells your products as well as you sell your product. And subcontracting the sales to someone else doesn't seem like a great way of being in control of your revenue stream. So I don't know if those are the right answers, but we haven't been on ad exchanges yet because they don't seem to have answered some of the questions. A final point on that subject would actually be frequency control. Um, let's think about it from the user's point of view. For a moment. Let's not think about it from the publisher's point of view, or the media owner's point of view, or the advertiser's point of view, and all the ease of buying and selling. I'm really into ease of buying and selling, and I really love that aspect of ad exchanges. If they can make it easy, that will be good, because there's a lot of friction in the system compared with TV buying and selling. But with TV buying and selling, there's a lot more control of, um, you know, with gross ratings and there's a target for how many times any given individual might actually see the advertisement. The way the technologies are set up in this, there's a triangle between the advertiser and the media owners, but actually the person consuming the advertisements. And there seems to be very little care going into the technologies in these systems about how frequently the user gets to see the advertisement. The user just seems to be some sort of victim that gets to see the advertisement any number of times. And I can point to dozens of examples at a personal level and other people who work outside of this industry who complain to me about online advertising all the time, about how they seem to get followed around the web by ads and how they get to see the same message over and over and over again. Whereas all the old philosophies of advertising said, well, actually, they're not old philosophies, they are their principles of advertising, <laughs> is that you can actually upset users by showing advertisements, then the same advertisements over and over again, and you can end up with a negative impact. And I don't see the technologies, which if they know this much about the users, surely should be used to control the number of times advertisements appear, thereby changing the supply and demand dynamic, thereby maybe negating the need for ad exchanges in the first place. So maybe there's a lot to do in this advertising industry before we think that that kind of technological solution is the right route for the online business. Maybe the answer is to look at ways of driving yield up.